Hi, I'm Warren, and this is me and my car. So the idea behind me and my car is it's a virtual car meet. If you've got something of interest and you'd like to see it on the programme, then why not contact me at the email address that will be shown at the end of the credits. This is my car. It's the Renault Clio RS200 Gordini. So like all good purchases, there's a great story behind this car. When I hit 50, I decided I'd celebrate by going to the Nürburgring and put a few laps in around the Nordschleife. So the first big flaw in that argument was that one, I'd buy my own car. Granted, car's capabilities were well above mine and uh, we managed to stay off the grass and importantly, out of the barrier as well. The other flaw was that when I would return, I would sell the car immediately. Anyway, without taking too much away from what I'm going to discuss later on, that didn't quite happen. So I love the way this car looks. I love the stance of it. I think that's certainly accentuated by the lowness of the car, but also uh, most people don't know that this car is slightly longer in the wheelbase than an ordinary Clio. Uh, and that's due to the extensive suspension changes that were made to this car. But there are three elements that I want to pick out. Uh, the first one is actually is this, uh, this cooling uh, duct here in the wing. Um, that's uh, just such a lovely feature ultimately, and it does serve a purpose um, by helping the, uh, the engine remain cool. It apparently also has a bit of a, an aerodynamic effect. The second element, um, coming around to the front here is this uh, F1 inspired uh, spoiler and then the final element um, well it's pretty much about the whole rear end really it just has such a great derriere um, and it's just teed off with uh, with the diffuser which is actually a, a working um, item on here uh, it produces about 40 kilograms of force at uh, 80 miles an hour uh, and I think at 110, it's uh, producing about 70 uh, kilograms of downforce. So um, a, you, you can really feel it as well, starting to suck you down. Um, naturally, that's on a track when we're uh, obviously doing that sort of speed. So when the design team at Dieppe were thinking about this car, they had motorsport on mind. And there are two elements that show that. The first one is the engine which is the F4R engine, which has its roots right back to the Clio Williams. And the second one is actually the suspension system itself. It's very sophisticated. If you take the front wheel off here, you can see that it's not your standard Clio item. So this is the engine bay. It's pretty cramped in there, uh, which is kind of surprising when you consider some people put the uh, McGann turbo unit in there. I know they have to uh, move the battery or replace it with the uh, compact uh, lithium iron one. Um, I have to say I prefer the look of the um, Clio Williams. I think it has a, a nicer finish to it, but it's uh, a beast of an engine. Uh, it's well known as a block to be very reliable uh, and very robust uh, and definitely proven in, uh, in motorsport. So a feature that I almost forgot to mention but are really important, the brakes. And this car is equipped with some amazing brakes. They're Brembo four pot calipers and their ability to stop this car is well known. In fact, it's so powerful, you can actually feel it lighten up at the rear through the seat of your pants. It was a little bit disconcerting when I first got the car to feel that, but the car's inherent stability is just so good always stops and pulls up nice and straight and true. So this is the interior of the car. It's pretty well appointed. It's got some nice piano black accents. Uh, the Gordini um, actually has uh, the seats uh, leather covered. 
these are the standard items. I find them really supportive uh, and they're equally as good on a long journey. Um, but those bolsters will hold you in as you, uh, as you pull uh, some serious uh, amount of G as you go around the corners. Uh, the other thing about this car is uh, those pedals. If we just take a look at those and you'll see there's a, a reverse L on the accelerator. That's for those of you who uh, actually are proficient in heel and towing. It's not a skill I particularly uh, am adept at, uh, but uh, I see how it, uh, how it works. But otherwise, uh, yeah, nice, a nice environment. Uh, this has got fully adjustable um, steering wheel, which is not something that the Cup models actually get. They, they have this like fixed uh, steering wheel position, um, which I understand can be a bit aggravating for some people. Uh, but this is, uh, works really nicely, works really nicely. One. Like most specialist cars, there are some flaws. And if you're gonna buy a car like this, these are the things I'd tell you to look out for and be aware of. First and foremost, the steering. That steering wheel apparently is in leather. I've actually known cling film that is uh, thicker than it. You just need to build that into the fact that it is going to disintegrate at some point and that you're gonna to have to have it retrimmed. Second element is the gearbox. The gearbox on the 197, this is actually an evolution of the 197 is the 200, um, it's notorious for ratio three and four going. Uh, they seem to have fixed it a bit with the 200, but it's not completely guaranteed. I personally get this car, have its uh, gearbox oil changed about every two years. Um, I only do about 2000 miles um, each year in the car, um, but it's about the safest thing I can think of doing is to try and be a you know, sort of preventative maintenance ultimately. Um, the other element is the bolsters on here, on the seats. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect the leather clad seats as much, uh, but I've noticed on the cloth ones um, that I've seen uh, that uh, that uh, right bolster seems to collapse uh, and there's no way around it except for a complete retrim uh, job on it. So it's quite an expensive um, element. So the fourth item that you should probably be aware of um, that can go on this car is the exhaust manifold. Uh, the OEM item is constructed uh, partially out of flexible uh, hosing um, and as a result of that uh, within about nine or ten years that's corroded and uh, so you start having some, some challenges especially when you come to uh, have the car MOT. I chose to change it um, from the standard item uh, I've put a pure motorsport uh, exhaust system on it, so uh, which gives a bit of extra power um, and some extra torque, and it sounds pretty good too. It's both outside and inside. So I did have a broken spring on the uh, front driver's side here. As a result of that, I made a decision to fit the IBAC Pro springs. They lower the car by 20 millimeters, which gives the car a quite a nice stance. Uh, but importantly as well, is they're quite compliant. Um, I didn't want to lose that because this car spends most of its time uh, around here on the B roads, a um, little bit of track day. So hopefully, um, when we come to track days, uh, it'll give me that bit of extra uh, edge on, on performance. But importantly, what I've noticed is, is when I'm driving around is there's not a big difference uh, in the compliance and the, and the ride quality um, on normal roads. Uh, so I'm quite impressed by them. They, they've, they've definitely been a, a huge benefit. Generally, I try to keep the car quite standard. I've, uh, I'm probably gonna have to have the steering wheel retrimmed um, at some stage. So why do I recommend this car? Most definitely. It's phenomenal. Dynamic handling is still excellent compared to the current hot hatch fraternity. It 
just is immense fun. There are many times when I've thought about selling it, um, primarily because that's what I was going to do when I came back from the Nürburgring. ring. But I usually make the fatal mistake of jumping in the car and going for what I call one last drive. And, uh, and I come back and uh, park her up, close the door and think, I oh, will keep her for a little bit longer. Just extraordinary car, just extraordinary. I, I hope that I can keep her for a lot longer. And if somebody said you had to keep her for the rest of my days, I'd do that. I'd absolutely do it. Um, not cheap to run, uh, but I suppose it depends on what you're comparing that to. Um, if it was a supercar, it doesn't look quite so bad. Uh, I think it's when you try to compare it to a normal, average, you know, shopping trolley type hatchback, uh, when it looks a bit expensive. As I said, I don't do great mileage in it anyway, uh, and that's not my plan. I'm, my plan is only to do a couple of thousand of miles um, in it each year, uh, probably about. 80 to 90% of those will be done on the B roads around where I live uh, and the others will be uh, just uh, track days where I get an opportunity to really unleash it and uh, thanks for watching me and my car hope you've enjoyed it remember we've got some other great stuff in the coming weeks and if you'd like to participate then drop me a line at the email address that will be shown at the end of the credits Thanks very much, and we hope to see you again soon.